Today, we will take a look at the differences and compare the HFS-20 Jiga counter from Amazon. The XR-1, also known as the BR-9B Jiga counter from AliExpress, and the Radio Code 102, a scintillation counter purchased from its official website. Let's start by taking a closer look at the HFS-20 Jiga counter. This is a classic radiation detector that uses a Jiga Muller tube, specifically the compact HH614. Due to its small size, the tube isn't particularly sensitive, as the device typically measures background radiation at around 8 counts per minute. However, it does have one notable strength. It can measure radiation levels up to 50 millisieverts per hour, making it capable of detecting very high dose rates in emergency situations. Next, let's take a look at the XR1, also known as the BR9B Jiga counter. This larger device uses the J321 Jiga Muller tube, a Chinese-made tube with moderate sensitivity. It typically detects background radiation in the range of 20 to 25 counts per minute. However, its maximum measurable dose rate is limited to 99.99 microsieverts per hour, which means it's not suitable for detecting very high radiation levels. Now let's look at the Radio Code 102. It uses a scintillation detector with a cesium iodide crystal doped with thallium, making it much more sensitive than the others. The Radio Code reads 300 to 500 counts per minute at background levels. It can also do gamma spectrometry and measures dose rates up to 1 millisievert per hour. Here, I've got a standard ionizing smoke alarm, the kind that uses a small amount of radioactive material, typically a mericium-241. It's sealed safely inside, so there's no danger handling it like this. A mericium-241 emits mostly alpha particles, which don't travel far and can't get through the plastic casing, but it also gives off some gamma radiation, which is what our detectors might be able to pick up, even from the outside. I'm going to start by testing it with the HFS-20 Jiga counter. It's not the most sensitive detector, but let's see if it picks up anything when we hold it close to the alarm. As you can see, after a few moments, even this Jiga counter with the small tube still definitely detects the gamma radiation and measures up to 0.92 microsieverts per hour. So, it can detect the radiation. But is the dose rate accurate? We will find out later. Next, let's test the XR1 Jiga counter, which has a much larger tube and therefore better sensitivity. As you can see, this Jiga counter has better sensitivity as it clicks more frequently and therefore also offers better resolution and stability. It maxes out at around 0.45 microsieverts per hour, which is significantly lower than the HFS-20. But now, we'll finally take a look at the Radio Code 102, which should provide us with the true energy-compensated dose rate to verify whether the other Jiga counters were accurate. As you can see, the Radio Code 102 reports a dose rate of around 0.24 microsieverts per hour, which is almost half that of the XR1 and a quarter of the HFS-20. This demonstrates that the other Jiga counters don't really have the capability to report dose rate accurately due to the lack of energy compensation, something I'll explain in more detail shortly. Jiga counters 
should primarily be used to determine whether something is radioactive, not to measure how much radiation is present. The Radia Code 102 uses energy compensation to give accurate dose rate readings. Unlike most Jiga counters, while regular Jiga tubes react to all gamma rays the same way, Radia Code adjusts for the energy of the radiation. So low energy gamma from things like smoke alarms doesn't appear stronger than it really is. When we tested it with an ionizing smoke detector, the XR1 and HFS-20 showed inflated values, but the radio code gave a more realistic 0.24 microsieverts per hour, proving how important energy compensation is for accurate measurements. The radio code 102 uses a scintillator crystal, which flashes light when hit by gamma rays. A photo detector measures the brightness of each flash to determine the energy of the radiation. This allows it to calculate an accurate, energy-compensated dose rate. Unlike basic Jiga counters, the Radia code also shows a real-time spectrogram, letting you see the actual energy distribution. For example, when testing an ionizing smoke alarm, you can clearly see the two main peaks at 26 and 59 kilo electron volt from the americium 241 in the smoke alarm. That's all I had for today. If you learned something new or found this video interesting, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. See you soon.